So currently I'm in Kathmandu in Nepal. I've been working with the university here to test the hydro turbine design. Before here, I was three months in India, mostly in Ladakh, working on the artificial glacier project up there with Sonam Wangchuk, uh, working on automating that for prevent freezing and to like just optimize their, their situation using microprocessor boards. I've been working with a NGO in Lalitpur, part of Kathmandu, on water filters for a solar pumping project and improved cook stoves. But the main project has been here testing the water turbines, finally getting like proper comparative efficiency testing of like different runner types. So I tried to make it so I wouldn't be still working on stuff like the day before I left, but it's just always that way. It's unavoidable. So this is the facility that they've got here, uh, the hydro testing lab. It's basically they've got like a whole dam scale test going on. Got a tank up on the landing, a couple of meters up. Uh, this is the turbine, fairly similar to what I've been working on so far. We've just been testing it mechanically, so we've just got like a prony brake on there. And the pump, p charging the tank, and then when that's full, run it down, kind of like I was doing in Berlin, um, but a bit more sort of like decent scale and like actually testing the, the different runner types. The hardest thing has been getting the siphon to prime. Plan A was just to sort of like seal the tank, have it overflow, and that starts the siphon, but it just wasn't enough flow to like to start it. Plan B was a like a shop vac to suck the air out, but the cleaning department didn't want us to use it in case we broke it, and we've got one here, but it's broken. Plan C was to, which I thought would work, lifting the horizontal tube up, uh, letting that fill with water, and then dropping it so that the siphon starts that way. Didn't work, not enough flow. So in the end, I've basically convert well not converted, but like made the water pump also function as a vacuum pump that when the water goes up, it goes out through one valve, fills the tank, and then opening like the drain hose, the water flows back through the pipe, go out through the, the, the second valve, sucks the air out, cycle that a couple of times, it sucks all the air in the system out, and then that starts the cycle, that's been working quite well. And it's also basically for free, we don't need any extra thing, it's just the water pump that we're using anyway. So this is the top assembly, there's a valve out, so that the water can fill the tank. And then it's got like this very, Sketchy float valve, just a pipe that I painted green and masking taped. The bit of polystyrene on the bottom, which does an alright job. And then another valve here, so the water comes out, fills the tank, and then turn the the, the pump feed to this hose off and the tap to the drain down on. The water weight, like three or four or five meters, uh, pulls back and then sucks air out of this cavity here at the top of the whole system. So the water will be up sort of just below the top of the tank here. They'll get sucked up a bit and then I turn the water on, it comes up and out, turn the water off sucks more volume of air out, about seven, eight liters with the length of hose. Comes up a bit, and usually on a third cycle, starts sucking water. This whole water column is elevated over the tip over point, starts tipping over, runs straight down this um, drop here, blasts all the water out of there, and then that starts the siphon, and then that blows any remaining water, uh, air rather, out of the whole system and then you've got a full siphon. This tap here is for putting water into this horizontal tube, uh, both to partially prime the siphon, but also because that end there, the bottom of that pipe is above the top of the other end of that pipe. It means that when that's full of air, water, it airlocks, basically divides the system into two pockets of air. This bit here 
and the whole much larger system down there with the turbine and the draft tube so that when this top bit is sucking air it only has to suck air from this little bit so it's much easier for it to get the water up above the level and then the air and the rest of the system just gets blasted out when the siphon starts that's it basically it's pretty simple um, just a few moving parts and uses the water pump that we're using anyway uh, to fill the tank dual purpose to also start the siphon and that works okay so all this is just to test the various 3d printable runner types relative to each other to see which is most efficient and effective and configurations involving flow guides and other ways of hopefully squeezing out some extra efficiency not to get full maximum power output which will need to be done in the field in a stream somewhere so this is just 180 i forget the dimensions but it's exactly the right diameter to go around 120 mil fans uh it's kind of strip off which is 50 50 percent wider than the, the fan width seems to be a good sort of dimension so it's going to shrink this on the only real thing to be aware of is just to make sure that this stays nicely centered i'm just going to dab in here so it locks on on one side check it looks good and then the opposite side probably don't want to do this so hot that it like maybe damages the fan plastic and so that's now heat shrunk on this is all in the tutorial which i'll link to in the description but that now turns what it like is and these things are stronger than you think like these can take a couple of meters ahead of flow uh, before you start picking up blades but they will eventually start picking up blades um because each each blade is a leader so it's like naturally weak whereas like this it's now like a tensile structure, each blade supports all the other blades, so that's basically it. That's now like very, very strong and won't really break under any conditions that this turbine actually might be the same. I'm just trimming this down a bit just so it can block more of the flow than it needs to. It only really needs to sit on these blade tips. Cool. Done. So these, this is more like the kind that I've been using so far, like seven blade, reasonably flat pitch-ish, um, fairly sort of like hefty. These are like the, in Berlin, when I was getting like the 200 watts, um, it was a black a fan pretty much the same as this. This type is just what they had, like I only managed to find this sort of recently, like most of them like I've seen have been like this, nine blade, uh, a lot weaker and a bit steeper pitched. So I have no idea which is going to be better. I'm thinking probably this one, but I'll try both and just see what the numbers look like. <laughs> Melted the pulley. That's a good sign about how much power it's doing at least. Jesus. So I've got that top bearing more or less free floating there because I don't want three fixed points. I've got two fixed points, the bearing here and the bush bearing here. And so you can always find a straight line between two points, but as soon as you introduce a third point, then you can start getting flexing and torsion and resistance on the, on the drive shaft. But I want that top connection point because the tension of the belt will otherwise flex that shaft. So this is just a way of having 
a fixed top point, which doesn't necessarily introduce resistance into the spinning of the drive shaft. So it's just a really easy, cheap way of doing that, just some nuts and bolts, basically, but it doesn't, doesn't slip, doesn't bend, and does a reasonably good job. None of this is really necessary if you're doing electricity from the turbine, obviously. This is just because we're using the, the prony brake to measure the mechanical power. Normally you just have the, the alternator sitting here uh, as per the tutorial, which is linked below. This works well for what we need it to be. And wing nuts, man. Wing nuts are the best. So full process for doing a load run. Change the load. And then update the load number. Start filling the tank. Tap to fill horizontal pipe. Turn off water to the tank. Turn off top tap. Turn on second camera. Gauge. Start recording. Check this crashing. Check the float gauge. Turn on weight scales. Lock on weight scales. Put the camera in. And then I'm going to put on slow motion and then I'm going to start that and then I'm going to prime the cycle. Second camera. Float gauge. And now do it a million times. So now adding a 3D printed flow guide stator kind of kind of thing to swirl the water vector the water onto the impeller uh, and then try that with them see what difference it makes if any
We're gonna mine. So, like I said, I've been like up against the clock to like to get out of here. I need to get out of here in like an hour. Tomorrow I'm flying back to Delhi. Uh, I'll be there for about two weeks and then back to Europe after that. I was not expecting Nepal in midwinter to be basically t-shirt weather. So currently I'm back in sunny, beautiful Edinburgh. After getting back from India, I spent a couple of months visiting some projects around Europe, uh, mostly Low Tech with Refugees and Low Tech Lab in France and Sunseed in Spain. And then after that, I spent a couple of weeks hitchhiking up to the Arctic Circle before coming back to Scotland. So the outcome of all of that testing is this graph which shows the maximum power output from each runner type. So as I said, this setup wasn't meant to test the absolute efficiency or maximum power of the turbine because the water was coming out of a thousand liter tank and so it didn't have time to spin up to a stable plateau of power, which means I'm not able to measure the efficiency at given heads or flow rates or the maximum efficiency overall, but I can compare the runner types and show which is more efficient than the other. And then they will be more fully tested in an in-field situation plugged into a continuous water source. So the obvious takeaway here is that the Archimedes screw type is by far the most powerful and efficient. With the reinforced PC fan doing a surprisingly decent job, like actually a lot better than the other more exotic types. And also that graph is still climbing. I'm in contact with the guys back at Kathmandu University who were helping me out to do a couple more higher torque loads on that fan type just to see where that curve gets up to before it starts dropping off. But it's, it's a pretty good option, really, uh, which I'm happy with because it is meant as the accessible material option. So it's good to know it's actually doing quite a good job as well. But the other, the larger fan type, surprisingly not as good. The more kind of fancy types with the logarithmic flower, the logarithmic shell and the spindle type all did not very good jobs at all. So they can be pretty much discarded as options. With the screw type, that's not optimized. Like that's just basically something that I just whacked together in my CAD package. So that can be hopefully honed in on more power still, um, just with the, the length of the screw and the number of turns and the pitch angle and, and all that kind of thing. There's a bunch of other graphs and data which are in the spreadsheet which I've linked below in the description. Meanwhile the other main takeaway is that the flow guide actually made things worse which I'm slightly but not completely surprised by. I will experiment with other kinds of stator turbines and flow guides just to see if more efficiency can be gained from spinning the water onto the runner but that's also going to be better suited for a in-field constant flow situation but so that's all for now thanks for watching i've got another couple of videos coming out soon about other things i've been working on the full build tutorial for this water turbine is linked in the description below as is my patreon which i finally got around to putting together and so like subscribe and see you next time